welcome to another episode of Sippin' and Sewin'. Today we are fixing this because it is too big, although, and you're welcome by the way, in my bikini. Um, it's too big and I need to fix it. I got it for super cheap on sale for like something ridiculous, $4 or something. And we have moved on to Pale Ale. Okay, so Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, one of the flagship craft breweries in our nation. Um, Sierra Nevada comes from California, my home state, um, Chico. I have been to the brewery, um, and yeah, pale ale being one of the first pale ales that I've had, probably most the same for you. Um, pale ale does come from England, that style of Beer. Sierra Nevada is going to be one of our most common that you will think of and when you see when you think of pale ales when you start getting introduced to different beers besides lager it does take a little bit of time to get used to because it is going to be a lot more bitter than like your lager your blonde your um, amber ales things like that but it is very delicious and yeah, we got the big bottle because we're doing a little bit of a more difficult sewing project today. So let's get on this. Really nice amount of head on it. You can see that nice and bubbly as well. It smells pretty delicious. It smells a little bit hoppy. Um, it is made with a magnum hops, pearl hops, finished with a cascade dried hop on that. Ha it does have the same marks as the Anchor Steam beer that we use, that we drank in the last episode. The two row pale and the caramel malts in there. Um, let's go ahead, go ahead and give it a go. I remember the first time I tried this, I was like, oh, it's so bitter, I can't handle it. Now that my palate has grown, I love this beer, and it doesn't actually taste very bitter at all. Mm. It only actually tastes a little more slightly bitter than the Anchor Steam Lager that we have. Has a bit of a more full body because it is an ale, it's not a lager, so we now have moved into the ale category. Now, remember, ales are top fermented beers because they, uh, the yeast, the ale yeast, actually ferments at a higher temperature than lagers. Lagers need to be fermented at a lower temperature, so they're bottom fermenting. A, um, beers it does have a little tiny bit of bitterness to it a little bit of citrus but not too much more malty actually pretty nice balanced finish it doesn't really linger too long reminds me of high school everybody used to drink these ones back in the mountains of Big Bear Just gonna go ahead and get a good start on this beer because I'm not super excited about this whole thing going on here. It does not do anything for me, but let's get it going. Okay, so now we want to fix this, right? So the problem is, is it's just it's just a little too big. So what I'm gonna do here is bring it in so it's a little bit tighter, so it doesn't fall show how I don't want to have a nip slip. I mean, you all might like that, but not me, unless I feel like wearing tacos at the beach. Yeah, we gotta fix this, because otherwise, that's not doing it. So, let's do this. Okay, so if you have something like this and you want to fix it, the best thing to do is put it on, and then you have to pin it, so that you can see, make sure that that's gonna work. Doing a little buzz. Pale ales, so you know, are a little stronger than lagers. This one, I think, is at about 5.9. 
5%, maybe 6% um, alcohol, and depending on the pale ale, it can go a little bit higher than that. But usually they're going to be somewhere around 6% uh, alcohol, so they are a little bit stronger than lagers. So just keep that in mind when you're drinking them. Okay, so you see this here. I'm just going to go ahead, be careful with your, with your fingers when you're pinning. You might want to put a thimble, okay? Just going to push this pin through. Can you see that? Oh, can you see that? No, can you see the boobs? Push this pin through both sides, okay? Wow, this is hard. Meow, meow. I need a drink. That was not working. I think I'm going to have a safe, use a safety pin instead. I found one. So, Make sure if you have ruffles, the ruffles go down because you don't want to sew it and then you have like one wonky ruffle or something like that, okay? If you're a dude, probably don't have anything with ruffles, but okay, so here we go. That's where it's fitting better, right? It's a little bit tighter on the boobage. Now that it's pinned, it's already fitting me a lot better if I bend over. I'm not having some nip slips. That's a good thing. Well, for me, at least. So, for those of you that are super lazy, if you wanted to just pin it, you could. Because look, me, me, me. But that pin's gonna get rusty and it's gonna fall out and then it's gonna be messed up and then what do you do? Right? So you might as well just sew it. Don't just pin it. Sew it. But look, it already looks way better. Right? And it's already holding in the boots. Ooh, they're not falling out. Anyway, so now let's get to sewing. But first, let's drink our beer. All right, now we have our bathing suit to work on, or whatever it is you're trying to take in, right? It seems like it's difficult, but it's really not that hard. And it's much more fun when you have a little buzz on it. I just keep drinking this beer because it's so delicious. Okay. So we have our pinned area, right? The most difficult part of this is that I want to make sure that all the ruffles are down. Because if I sew it and the ruffles are pointing up, it's going to mess up. I'm going to go ahead and pin where I'm going to sew. So now I can take this safety pin out since I made my mark. So if we look here, we're sewing right to that part at a diagonal. We're going to hand stitch that. If we had a sewing machine, it would be much easier and much faster. And soon we will get to the sewing machine parts of these videos. But for now, we're sticking to this easier. That's why we're drinking a little bit of a more strong beer, although that probably doesn't make sense. We're probably drinking easier beers with harder sewing projects, but not doing that today. I've got my yellow thread, just in case you didn't see from the other side. So, go to the top where the pin is, go ahead and stick your needle right in where the top of the pin is, okay? Make sure these two are even. You don't want one side like higher than the other on this. That's it. You just have to pay attention. So maybe you don't want to drink beer or you do want to drink beer, but uh, just pay attention. So just stick it right through where that pin is. All right. And pull it all the way through. Okay? 
So I'm going to go a couple times just right there. Because that's the most important part is the top part. Especially since it's just the top that's big. Because you never know when you're swimming. You don't want there to be a, an accident. And I don't mind. I've lived in Mediterranean. Boobs are boobs, right? But some people get offended. It's just because they, they don't know how to control themselves. I didn't say that. You could always cut that off if you wanted to, but it's really not that big of a deal. But do you see what's happening there? You can see it much easier from this side. So do you see what we did there? Just like that. And I just made that as a point because I don't need the bottom was fitting fine. Just the top was loose. So we're taking all that in. Do you see that? So now I'm going to go back through. Okay, now you can see we created, see that? That's what it looks like anyways when it was sewn together, so it looks like kind of wonky, but that's not really wonky. And for shits and giggles, I'm just going to go back down one more time. Okay, here we go. I think that's enough. We went up and down three times. We created this piece. When you're tying the knot, it doesn't really matter um, where you put it. It doesn't have to be both sides of the fabric. Usually, I don't know, actually do both sides of the fabric. I just do a little bit of whatever the fabric is that I'm trying to knot through, um, whatever side that is. <laughs> Now we put this thing, move this thing back to the middle. And then let's try it on. Alright, I'm not sure if it's beer goggles or if it's my sewing job, but I've almost finished my beer and we fixed my bathing suit and it looks but much, much more flattering. Fits. It's tight. I don't have to worry about having a, a slippage of the nips. And hey, hey, I like it. It works. Worth the $4. That didn't take very long. I have a good buzz on, and now I can go jump in the ocean. 
anyway, all right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Enjoy yourself and go get a Sierra Nevada. Try it out. Have a pale ale. Try a different type of pale ale. Let me know what you think. All right. Take care. See you.